Welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're taking a look at one of the most important palette windows that you could ever use if trying to tone information in Adobe Photoshop. This is especially helpful if you do not have a calibrated monitor. And that is the Info Palette. in the info palette is under window and you would drag down here to info and it should pop up. Now I've moved it over here so we can see this and make it really easy. By default, it doesn't come with these settings, but if you wanna change the settings or the readouts that you're getting, you're just gonna go ahead and click on this little eyedropper and it will allow you to choose grayscale, web, HSB, CMYK, anything here. Now I am working in 16 bit a lot of the times, but I actually read only an 8-bit. Why? Because I don't know the number values for 16-bit. Just easier to remember 8-bit. So we're going to leave this at RGB. The two that I use are RGB. Why? Well, because we work in RGB. And then probably the most useful one is the K value, which has to do with black. If we come over here and I take my cursor over this image, now I created a 50% gray image. And so you can see right now that K value up here is going to be 50% gray. So these are just about 50% gray. I've added a little bit of color to them. But anytime you want to read the gray value in an image, you're going to look at K. And I have to say, I use K more than I use anything else. Now the red, green, and blue values are always very helpful, especially if you're somewhat colorblind. So I do know some colorblind people, and this is a very helpful tool in letting them somewhat color correct and get colors sort of accurate. So you'll notice that right now, so we're gonna be looking over here at this red, green, and blue values. When you are over a completely neutral gray, all three of those numbers will be exactly the same. Now watch what happens. So up here I created and made this just a little bit cyan. So you'll notice as, as I made that cyan, the green and the blue values are the same, but the red is different. And then we'll go over here, which is the opposite. So now the red value has changed, but the green and the blue values have changed. Down here, I made this one yellow. And down here, our red and green are the same and our blue value is different. Once you learn, what values correspond with what color, it will be easy for you to tell if an image has too much red, too much cyan, too much yellow, especially if your monitor is not calibrated. Remember, if you don't have a calibrated monitor, just because you see a color doesn't mean that it's actually that color. Hopefully it's close, but you can never be sure. So by using the info palettes, you can really get a precise, reading of what that color is. How do we use that in real life is always the question. So let's come over here to this rock formation. And I just downloaded this image and straight out of the bat, I can tell you that this image is flat, meaning that the black values are not dark enough. So let's go over here to this. And so right now that area, and I'm looking at my K value, which is where what I use 99% of the time, it's only at 89%. I don't even know if we can find anything in this image that's dark and darker than 89%. So right here, it looks like 90, that's our darkest spot. Now, if you do have a true black, you can actually set black and make that value 100%. Most printers can't print exactly 100% black. 100% black or black, black might only be 98 or 97%, maybe 95%. It depends on the type of printer that you're using. What we would need to do to get this to be a true black, as you can see, this is very flat. We need to make an adjustment curve. Now I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna do an adjustment layer. I'm just gonna be doing some destructive curves here just cause it's a little bit easier. So the first thing that you could do is obviously we see right here's our white point and here's our black point. Since I know this should be black, I can go in here and set that as black. Now, usually when you set black points, it makes it way too contrasty and it doesn't work. Up here we have a histogram and the histogram tells us inside of the curve and these are also located in levels and other areas 
of adjustments where the data is in this image. So you can see we have a lot of highlights, not a whole lot of midtones, and then a lot of stuff in the shadow areas. But right here, there's no information and there should be. So you can actually optimize your histogram by sliding this over. And as we slide that over, you can see our black values getting closer to where we want. I'm not gonna slide it the whole way over, but I'm getting pretty close. Now what's cool about this is once you make an adjustment, you can come over here and read that same point. So look up here in this K value and what you will see is it was 90% and now it's 94%. So like, let's say I wanna to try to get that at 95%. I can slide that over a little bit more and now I'm at 95% and I can say, okay, that looks good since this is 95% and back here is 89%. I think we've got a good contrast in that image. Now, just like reading the shadow areas, I can also read the highlights. So I can come up here in my highlights. You don't wanna set something with detail, a white at 0%, because if you set it to 0%, and that's my biggest issue with setting white, it will set it at 0%. It has no detail, there's nothing there. Usually in a photograph, you wanna have something at least 2%, two or 3%, because because whatever type of print you're gonna make or put that on the web, there's gonna be some detail there. If you print something and this is all 3%, but you have like one area up here with 0%, it's gonna look like this weird white splotch and look horrible when it prints out. You might not see that on the computer, but when you dumb down a print and have it outputted, it's gonna look really, really weird. So you wanna make sure usually in photography, in a white area, that you're holding that white value if there's detail there. Now, if this is totally blown out and there's nothing here, leave it at zero. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, if you darken it in, it will just get gray and it looks weird. But we can see right here, this is pretty good. We're holding that value. It looks like the brightest area I can find is around 3%. So I know I'm gonna hold that value and we're gonna have detail in this image. We'll make that same curve that we did before and I'll blow this out a little bit. So we're gonna brighten this. And then when I come over here, you can see it saying, hey, you were at 6%, but now you're at 0%. It also giving us the red, green and blue values but I'm not really interested in that. I'm really interested in just holding that white value. So if you were to tone this image, this wouldn't turn out so good because we have zero here, zero here. There'd be no detail. It'd be this just white void when it printed. This is one of the first things I teach in my Photoshop course in college is using this info palette. And I think students forget about it and don't use it a lot, but I use it literally daily. This is over here on my other monitor set up and I'm constantly reading values. We're gonna come over here. Another good thing that you can do, and this takes a while to get used to it, is I can read skin values. I basically know the complexion of this person, and I can hover over them, and I can tell you that with her complexion, she should be somewhere between 15 and 17% gray to print out. Now it's a little bit red in this image, but 15% gray. So anywhere from about 15 to 17%. So she's a little bit hot. So she's a little bit hot in a certain areas that I might want to tone those down. Now that is for a subject with this skin tone where the light is good. If you were to come over here, you're going to get a totally different reading. This is with just average normal lighting. So if we come up here, I'm actually gonna read, not in this highlight value, cause it's not giving me a, a good base. But yeah, so this person right here should be somewhere between 60 and 55%. And so we can see she's at 66 there, but she's at a higher value in this highlight. So once you start to understand what different skin tones look like in a K value, you can get more accurate toning of portraits in Photoshop. A lot of times when you're toning, you just think it looks good, but then you're gonna take this info palette and kind of read it where you think the image looks bright enough and then you realize that this girl's face is at like 30%. You're like, oh, I'm gonna have to brighten that area up 
because the value of her skin isn't good. Now this takes time because there's no table that says people with this skin color, it should be this. And with this skin color and with this skin color, it should be like this. I kind of know by just looking at people's skin tones about where they should be, but that's kind of years of experience. But getting used to using this info palette is gonna be so beneficial to toning in photography. If you get used to it now and good at it, when you start toning for a profession, people are gonna be really impressed just by the accuracy in which you can tone. But hopefully that has been helpful. You learned a little bit about the info palette. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.